probably pull out. When I say clap, you say clap. Clap. Right. Oh, no. Try again. Clap. Clap. It's about two seconds. It was worse. It's cleared itself up a little All bit. All right, let's give it a second. The... I'll give you a yeah. section. Oh, but don't they used for construction? Or oh, navigation? No, it's navigation, isn't it? You think of a sextant? Stars. Yeah, that's the thing I'm thinking of. Oh, you give me, a, give me a sextant. No, I said a sexing. Oh, Jesus, there's a major communication fail there. Gonna get sexed by me. Can you jam with the console cowboys in cyberspace? Video games. Welcome, friends of all designs, to Top 5.5 Bit, the weekly show where we talk about our top fives in various criteria. This week's criteria Top 5 Parody Games. I'm your host, Paul, and joining me today is my very mustache wearing friend, James. Why, hello there. I'm a parody of James. Why don't you go make a game, James? Go ahead, do it. Ah. <laughs> is that what I sound like? That was, yeah, kind of. That was a pretty good James. Yeah. And my parody of a real boy, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that's I think that's one of my favorite ones you've done. <laughs> it's pretty apt. So. <laughs> I think you have to really know Ben to fully appreciate that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really it really probably just comes off as more mean than intended to those that do not know. But that's all right. I'm I'm okay with coming off as mean sometimes. <laughs> uh, so parody games, James. What is a parody game? Uh, so it's just a game which is really about about another game and satirizing it in some way, shape, or form. Um, and that, that was re- really about it. I your only parodies of games? Uh, yes, I did stay. Uh, no, no, I'll take that back. It didn't necessarily have to be a game. It's a parody of something else. All mine are pretty game-related, I think. Uh, ben, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, like, I'll have to admit, like most mainstream concepts, I didn't actually really even know what a parody was. So I had to go <laughs> research it. So now it's pretty much just games that are parodies of things. Is this um? Is this going to be one of those lists where we basically just rate how much your choices are to do with the selection? Or do I you think, think you got it in the end? I think I got it. Okay. Well, let's find out. James, what is your number five? Hey, number five. It's one of my favorite PSP games, and I'm going for Half Minute Hero. Excellent. Yep. So Half Minute Hero is a take on kind of old JRPG tropes in which you play a character who has one half minute to destroy the world in practice, uh, to save the world. In practice, you've got more than that uh, because you get the ability to stop time and, and restart the counter and things like that. But it's it's a really cool game that that makes fun of but also embraces the kind of the tropes from those things, like all the characters and the villains and the uh, all the cinematics and things. Like One of the things I love that it does is each level is a game yeah with including ending sequence like credit roll every time you can hit a button to kind of skip through it but they frame it so each one is like an entry into a series of of jrpgs that goes on for god probably 40 odd levels or whatever it is um yeah i played it on psp and it looked really nice on that and nice thing about that game is if you get it on vita it looks just it looks better it's yeah. like it's a fantastic looking game playing the PSP version on on the Vita. I think it, it hits some other things as well, right? It, uh, it might have been hit Steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it on Steam, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a really really casual take on JRPGs, and it really works. I I, I like that uh, each of the levels has a couple of puzzles associated with it. So they might say they'll just give you a word, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll give you little goals to find in there. There'll be just like little things you can do because there's kind of limited branching kind of progress in some of these levels. And so there'll be different ways to solve it and things like that. Really, really fun game. Sort of took me by surprise. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, ben, what is your number five? Yep, okay. So my number five, which I've just sent you guys the link to, just so you know, um, this one came from, I found out that Flappy Bird had a lot of parodies. And then I found out that Sesame Street had made a parody of Flappy Bird called Flappy Bert. And it is hilarious. It's this little Bert head, which it works just as... I haven't actually played Flappy Bird, but I assume it works just the same as Flappy Bird. I'm sure and, it does. Okay, there's, there's billions of these games, I know. But this one is really funny. It's just a little Bert head, and you've got to make him go through the things. And if he sort of doesn't get there or something, he screams out, Ernie! And it made me laugh. And so there's my parody. It's in a browser, so everyone can play it. And yeah, 
Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of Flappy Bird clones and everything. It's yeah, I mean, yeah, that's they fall under parody. I guess there's um, we were talked about one last episode where after you dropped out, which was a, a cross between Flappy Bird and the other popular game at the moment, Twenty Forty Eight, which was Flappy Forty Eight. Uh, that was very good too. More Fluffy 48. Okay, so number five. Uh, my number five, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a couple of games. They're sort of, they're sort of modern games. Uh, games like uh, Dead Rising, Transformers, Killzone, Need for Speed, Skylander, Battlefield, and, of course, Watch Dogs, which, you know, I, I was playing a lot of that the other day. It's very good. Um, because this is actually a collection of games called Future Classics 1986, which takes a whole bunch of games, game names. Some of them, as you may know, like Watch Dogs isn't even released yet. And they've made old school, um, sort of Commodore 64 era games based on it. So like Watch Dogs is you play a dog that has in space that has to jump from watch to watch. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily the best game. <laughs> uh, trans- so they're kind of like crazy name demakes. So yeah, not- yeah. So Transformers might be my favorite. It's a, it's, um, basically you've got voltages that scroll down the screen and you have to change the voltage and polarity on all the all the transformers at the bottom to match what's coming down or you'll cause a... <laughs> <laughs> or an overload um, okay so so not only are these parodies of names yeah, yeah, yeah. they're also terrible puns they're terrible puns this is awesome parodies I... of like mainstream things uh, mainstream games uh, but they're also parodies of old commodore 64 games and such um it's there's some really cool ones on here. Actually, I can't remember what Battlefield is. I've got it loaded up now. Uh, how many goals can you score against the enemy team in Battlefield? <laughs> um, it's an awkward sports game. <laughs> That's why I couldn't remember it. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you could play this online. I think you can also get a download of it. It's sort of made as part of a game jam, and then it went, oh, that's right. They've also got um, Kill Killzone, which is basically Snake. It's the zone where you kill other players. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I'll stop playing that game because it's distracting me. But yes, uh, check it out. Future Classics 1986, which is a truly unique little title. <laughs> okay, uh, number four. So what do you got for me, James? Uh, number four was a, a, a bit of marketing that came out from uh, the creators of Bulletstorm. Remember this one? Duty Calls? Dude, uh, actually, yes. I was looking at this just before. I was wondering if anyone would mention it. Yeah, yeah, I had it. Yeah. It, was, it was glorious. It was a very short stab at the the modern warfare so the call of duties of of the world uh it was pretty harsh in the way they they made fun <laughs> of the... <laughs> but the thing with its harshness was it was also very very apt so it was so it, it it did things like uh it would level you up all the time you'd be like sergeant then like super sergeant and then like super sergeant awesome man it just it just sort of kept you going. jumped up a step <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dlc oh. And yeah, that, that always... very that very strict sort of linear tutorial type thing. And it's like it's like now we're going to get ready to step, take a step forward. Yeah, great work, soldier. It's like <laughs> you, you get shot and your screen you go red and make bloody screen so real. <laughs> <laughs> it was glorious. It was yeah. Uh, it, it's really highlighted the kind of the modern issues <laughs> that like with to, from the kind of the stupid patriotism to just kind of like all their, like the, the slow-mo where you have to, yeah, it's, it's glorious. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can go download that thing for free still. It'll be, well, it'll be out there somewhere. I never actually, I didn't realize it was actually playable. I thought it was almost like a demo, like a demo they released. So it was, you could actually download and play it. Could you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good yeah I never actually gave it a yeah, go. Yeah. Totally playable demo. Awesome. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now. So real. So real. <laughs> hey, uh, ben, what is your also awesome number four? Yep. Um, my number four is my sports entry because there's a lot of parodies of um, sports games, I guess. Um, there's there's a few worth mentioning, Blood Bowl, but we've discussed that before. An NFL blitz is, is Blood sort Bowl of... a parody? It's just a tabletop game. Yeah, not it's the... a little bit of parody. I'd say I'd put it in yeah. the maybe pile of parody. The... like. It is going after... I'd put it in the maybe sport. Definitely. It's probably more like if you play it and you experience the commentary. Because the commentary... Because yeah. that really does sort of poke fun at... Um, at football st- yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, and NFL Blitz is a little bit of a, I guess, more an extreme version of NFL. But the one I was going to... I ended up picking was NBA Jam because we haven't sort of talked about it, I don't think, in the top five before. And it is a really fun game. It just 
breaks it down to a two on two game, and then sort of you know, I guess again it just more extremifies. Well, yeah, it's got parody elements. So that's because I mean it's just like it's an arcadey basketball game at top, but it does have parody elements in there. It's got lots of jokes and stuff. Yeah, yeah and it's got the massive jumping, and I uh, yeah, it's I guess it's yeah more extreme rather than parody. But yeah, anyway, it's a fun game. Yeah. Okay, my number four. Uh, you may have played Dear Esther. I played the original and I quite liked it. Didn't really like the remake for some reason. Don't know. Maybe it's because I already had the experience. Uh, but with all of the Dear Esther talk that was going on, some people thought they could make a little game of the same vein. And they called it Dear Esther Ban. Uh, it'll literally take you about five minutes to play through. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it just takes all the church from Dear Esther. You're just walking along and hearing discussion. This discussion is mainly about being crushed under motorcycles and sky whales and how the cat is on the table. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they'll just throw anything there. Uh, it's one of those things. They, they came out and said that even though like it's poking a lot of fun at Dear Esther, they actually really liked Dear Esther. But they thought with uh, the gravitas that that game sort of carries, it was worth undercutting. And I think that's sometimes very true. So, you know, even if something's good, you can still take the piss out of it. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so you could grab that one online as well. Very, very cool. Okay, number three is what have you got for me, James? Okay, n- number three is a game I picked off, picked up of an old shareware disc yep. years and years ago. Okay, I'll give, I'll give you the full title. Okay, it's Ultima MCLXVII oh, Part 2 of the 39th Trilogy, Quest for the Golden Amulet. I don't know these, these kind of genius things, yes. Yeah. I don't know that this, one in particular, but yes. So this this game came out from Origin, uh, not <laughs> not to be confused with Origin, as Origin, uh, and it was a, a side-scrolling take on going after uh, the Ultima RPGs. It was actually very dissimilar to, to the RPGs. It really was just sort of the side-scroller that you went through. Uh, and you'd go along and you'd kill things and you'd level up and you, it was not balanced at all. It was You just keep going and going and going. But it was probably it was probably the first game that I picked up that I realized was a parody or something. Because before this, I hadn't really played many parody mm-hmm. games. Like, this thing came out in, I think, 93. And that was probably about the time I played it. Uh, and it was, yeah, I thought, I thought it was kind of funny. Like, you know, I, I could have got it expect it to be Ultima because uh, that's what Ultima I thought it was. Right, it had a big number. <laughs> had, yeah, and I know there's been a lot of those Ultima games, uh, but instead <laughs> it was this this really poorly drawn side scroller where you just go from one end to the other, killing dudes with your wand. There was not much to it. One uh, of the things but... I love about parody games is that parody is a pretty low form of art most of the time, and especially the other ones, but even still continue now, they're mostly incredibly shit. Yeah, but this like... one is terrible. <laughs> a terrible, terrible game. It's a, and the humor is like Mad Magazine. It's like, new kids on the block, more like new farts on the block. <laughs> it's like, oh, I get oh, it. Those guys stink. <laughs> oh, 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 there's the subtitle. Very good. <laughs> so uh, what was that name again? Uh, it was Ultimate 1996. Sorry, 1967. I, I did the math. By which I mean I went to Google to find something to translate that wrote those Roman numbers for me. It's a big number. 1976, uh, part two of the third Night trilogy, quest for the golden amulet. Did you ever find the golden amulet? I think he did. I think I did find it. It's been so long since I played well, it. Were you the golden amulet all along? No, it was nothing that clever. Oh, that would be my twist. Okay, Ben, what is your number three? Yep, my number three is, I can't remember if we've mentioned this one or not, it's the political machine. It's it's pretty much a parody of all things, well, a, well, an election, an American presidential election, and it just pretty much throws oh, anyone in there. The first one I played, I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger was a candidate, and just some crazy other celebrities got to run. I'm guessing what if they made crazy, what would we live in a world when Arnold Schwarzenegger was running for well, government? President, anyway. It's bad. Um, <laughs> um, what's so? What's the game actually like? As in, how, how does it play? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's just broken up like as per a stand election. So you've got um electoral college of um all the different states and their electoral votes. So is it like a management have... game or something? Uh yeah, I think so. Um so you sort of tell your candidate where to go and they'll go there and talk about issues and do little press conferences and that'll sort of either boost or um detract from your um polling in that state. And you just sort of do that up until the day of the election and then the election's held and you see which state you won and lost. So it's sort of based on rationale of how different states, what sort of issues are important to them and how they'd react to certain things. 
and um, depending on what candidate you're so taking on. So was it on, sort of like it'll... was it like parody um, issues and stuff they'd bring up? Yeah, not so much. They sort of used proper issues. It was just they sort of took it a little bit lighter, threw in some crazy celebrities which would have different appeal to different people. So it sort of put a little bit of a oh, not a, ch- a cheaper side to politics, I guess, is a one way to describe it. Okay. Just a fickle, a fickle, a fickle view to politics on how people react to certain things. All right, cool. Uh, uh, my number three, a very recent game, a very popular game. Uh, this game is a parody of the fighting genre. Uh, and it is an excellent parody in that it both p- makes fun of the fighting genre and makes everyone that plays it happy. It is Dive Kick. It's so Dive- good. It is an amazing game. One of the few games that you can play two-player on a PS Vita because you only need one controller to play the damn thing because each person only controls two buttons, a jump and a kick. Well, dive and a kick, but, you know, it's a jump, effectively. Uh not only that, but layered on top of that, all of the character designs are based on different fighting game tropes and ideas, and it is ridiculous. It's one of the stupidest games I've ever played, and in that, it results in a lot of laughter when you play it. Plus, it's actually pretty good as a competitive fighter. People do pull it out at tournaments and stuff. It's a fun, like, it's made by serious fighting fans, making fun of the, basically just taking that so many games do fall into this basic positioning mo- um, method of fighting anyway. So they just took that one mechanic, built an entire game on it, and it worked out pretty goddamn well. Yeah, it actually well. turned out it was pretty fun. And yeah. because it's so simple, you can just throw a controller in anyone's hand. Yeah. And Anyone gets um, a sound, unless yeah. they choose like one of the weird characters. Oh, God. Some of them. How do you even make him kick? I don't even understand. Yeah, What's yeah. going on? Yeah, weird like, oh, movement. He's damaged by the trail left behind. With the- ah, Yeah, it got a little confusing. Got really confusing. And um, recently they threw in uh, from Saints Row, the main character from Saints Row 3. I forget his name. Johnny B something. Be Good. awesome. No. It's Johnny something. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's cool. Great it's Fun game, though. Really fun game. Very fun game. I should have brought some of the character descriptions because they're pretty funny. But oh, well, you can like Redacted. Redacted? Yeah. <laughs> Just these, like, uh, this big wolf thing and his name's Redacted with a cross. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so time for number two. What have you got for me, James? Okay, it's uh, number two is a one that's based off a CB series, and this is probably maybe not my favorite Space Quest game, but it's up there, and Space Quest Five. Now, Space Quest normally does make fun of other sci-fi genres, but Five yeah. especially, they went after Star Trek. It was like, they were just going bang on for it. Uh, and it was pretty successful. Like, it was it was a fun game within its own right, but they really did stay focused on on sort of going after that kind of stuff all, all the way down stuff. to the sound of the beeps in the um in the mm. when you're in the captain's chair and everything inside that the what are the bridge like the beeps are basically directly from star trek and yeah they play with it so well yeah and it, it works really well uh this was actually the first space quest game that didn't have both the guys from andromeda on it oh, yeah. it was actually only mark crow and it was also wasn't done internally at sierra it was the first one they they shipped out to dynamics which are still basically sierra but it wasn't sort of inside that core office mm. uh but it was also one of the one of the more finishable space quest games because this one i got through with no walkthroughs or anything like that but it was still it was still challenging it just it seemed to have fewer ways to completely screw yourself like i remember there'd be like way to like leave an item behind that might have screwed you later but it was pretty obvious that you'd need to pick it up. So they, yeah. they kind of, yeah, they, they were, they were, but I mean, Space Quest games are generally pretty good for that. But I think five was probably the last of that era of Sierra games where they would let you screw yourself because things changed considerably when six came. Yeah. Six was far more Lucas. Um, but it was still, yeah, yeah. But it was still forgiving enough that you, you could get through it without too much fuss. Yeah. Uh, I did five without a walkthrough. It was fine. Yeah. I liked yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, uh, number two, what have you got for me, Ben? Yeah, number two. Uh, I ended up putting Duke Nukem Forever in because <laughs> there's not much stuff. good about this game. but the, there's I, pl- I, I stand by There is plenty good in Duke Nukem Forever. There's also just lots of shit, too. Uh, and it's not a good balance. But there's still lots of fun things in Duke Forever. Yeah, I want to see went... a Duke Forever like director's cut. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just about to mention. Like, yeah. I went back. There's a 15 minute um video put together. I was just going to talk about this, and um, it actually is really good, and actually sort of makes the game look better than it probably is. But it also has all the <laughs> highlights, and there are some really good, funny moments in there. My favorite is still the 
the green power armor, and that bit sort of made me smile still. Yeah, and um, pokes fun at a lot of things. Well, I mean, the yeah. entire Duke Nukem concept in the first place is just a parody of 80s action. And then um, it then birthed its own... Um, uh, what was, uh, Matt Hazard, wasn't it called? Or Matt, it's like the, Matt Hazard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were two games. Like One was like called like Bloodbath and Beyond, and the other one was The Return of Matt Hazard. It was basically Duke Nukem Forever, like a Duke Nukem-style character, 80s-style character, and they just like eventually they couldn't make games with him anymore or something. So they, he ends up like getting trapped between games. So it's this whole genre. Ma- one of them is a side-scrolling platform and one of them is a third-person par- shooter. Yeah. Didn't do very well. But they were actually okay games. Mm. And they had a pretty decent sense of humor to them. Anyway, since no, one com- so, so, since no one shut me up, I assume that wasn't anyone's thing. So good. Let's continue. Number two. That's me, isn't it? Oh, good. Yep. Here I get to share my favorite discovery this entire thing. The game is called Sega Gaga. Yeah, That's... no, you told me about this one before yes. the show, and I was told not to look it up. No, 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 because I'm going to tell it now. This game was on the Dreamcast. It was only released in Japan. Now, this game, you play... Now, Sega Gaga, you say, Sega's in that name? Yes, it's literally about Sega. You are working in Sega's research and development, and the Dreamcast is, uh, un- is commercially unsuccessful. <laughs> so you are tasked... We're putting together people in the re- in R and D to try and save the Sega Dreamcast uh, from the evil. Uh, I think the other company is called Dogma, I think, but it's just basically um, Sony. So you all like Sega, like Sega characters populate the building and everything. And so like there's a I watched a very sentimental moment moment with Alex Kidd where he's like talking about why he's why he's fallen from grace and everything. Uh, and so you walk around the building. It's like a JRPG. And you recruit people by fighting them in a in a RPG battle system. And there's mini games relating to all these games. So just um, the games you're making and everything. And the fact that this exists, Sega made a game about Sega failing. It's wow. like this is this is glorious. I had no idea this existed. Exactly. I only found it before, and it's and like it's a pretty decent game too. When it was first pitched to them, they actually thought it was a joke, and like like they didn't. Greenlight because they didn't think they was actually seriously asking for it. But when they sort of got to the end of development, they're like, well, actually, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with this. It doesn't make us look like jerks or anything. So, yeah, release it. It's fine. So, how freaking cool is that? I'd love to get a copy of this. Um, unfortunately, I need to learn Japanese. Yeah, I don't know if there's any localizations there. for this one, but no. yeah. That... Such, a, such a unique concept for a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just, gonna, just trying to save the parent company of the console. Great. And I'm an R and basically I'm, I'm working QA. Great. Okay. Um, so time for number ones. What have you got for me, James? Okay. Number one is actually part of a game. Yeah. And that is one of the quest chains in World of Warcraft. Oh, yes. Okay. So it, this is it, particularly in the undead area of the game. There is one part where you put a question mark on your head mm. and you start handing out quests. Is that pretty early? It's pretty early. I think it's in the second zone. So you're probably around level like 15 ish, somewhere around uh, there. Because I, I played Undead and I had some vague recollection, but no, I didn't play for that long. And you you have a, you have characters walk up to you, which is sort of the quintessential kind of WoW players. So it'll be like the character of Damas, who is like this nub that's like talking in all caps, saying "Help, please, help, please, help, please." Or there's like the overconfident role player, or there's this guy called Johnny Awesome, who is the the elitist guy who's bought his sparkly horse. And he's sort of coming up, <laughs> like telling you how awesome he is. But the, the great thing was, was that they then referenced these characters throughout the zone. So you kind of give them the quests and they, they go off and do their thing. And then as you kept exploring, you'd find out like with, with Johnny Awesome, he's like, his horse would be dead. And so you'd have to try and find Sparkles, his horse, to kind of get mm. him back. And like, it was it was just really it was really well done. And it was it's one of the reasons I like the the writing in WoW, that they can kind of do things like that. It even only had like just a few pop culture references like normally they go kind of crazy with pop culture references which means the stuff dates but this one is just it was really just you know having a stab at the kind of people that play wow and the, the kind of quests they have and and things like that like the the person receiving the quest will go what like i don't have to go get like 10 bear rugs or something like that like it it's just they, they know what they're doing uh and and when i hit that i just yeah it that whole zone 
which is it was just really fun to play because of that kind of premise as I was moving around. Mm. Cool, cool. Okay, Ben, what is your number one? Yep, okay. My number one is actually the series of games on the um, Peter website. They've got a whole bunch of games, including one where <laughs> they sort of... crazy! Wait, no. Yeah. Don't let Peter know that I said they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they're so, crazy! So they've got one that sort of just rips into McDonald's because they seem to have a really hate fast food. But they've also got one that sort of tears into the whole Pokemon um, concept. Well, and... it is basically <laughs> imprisoning animals and making them fight. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> but and the little like I played it last night, and so you throw your little dude out there, and his attacks are like group hug, and the enemy's attacks are like dehorning, and I'm like, oh, okay. And well, uh, there was a bit of thing where they did the um the Super Tanuki skin 2D, which is the um Mario Brothers thing up where they're taking, yeah like the killing because like Nintendo, I th- I think it was Nintendo came out just sort of thing like you get the Tanuki suit by picking up a leaf. <laughs> so I... <laughs> yeah. Really, I thought it was a blade to skin a tanuki. Oh, that does make it sense. Look like yeah. that would be good. And then there was um Super Tofu Boy as well, which was like, what are you making fun of Super Meat Boy from? He's yeah. just made of meat. He doesn't do it. anything against meat or anything. He jumps yeah. around and tries not to be killed. They Fine. can be a little, a little random. Sometimes. They can be a little random. They really can. They, they're not very good at picking their fights. I no, think no, Peter. No. They just. Like they just like it's like there's a big wheel that they spin and they, today we're going after Nintendo. But I, <laughs> the thing is, like, I don't know how much they're after Nintendo and things like that, and more so just using the game sometimes as something to make a point and get a bit of attention. Because yeah. like yeah, yeah, like they've uh, got um like the cooking they've got a Cooking Mama one. So I don't really think they give that much shit about Cooking Mara, but Cooking Mara had a, a bit of following and it was iconic at the time. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, this is a forum we can use to get some, you know, especially kids to come look and engage in this discussion. So even though, like, we like to say they're crazy, I don't think they're as crazy as we make out. I think they're just, look, here's a way of us to bring these issues towards people. More going after pop culture, probably, than, yeah, exactly. than any particular, like, company. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, mm. so, my number one. Uh, I'm just going to play a little clip from it first. Hello there! I'm King Mattress, ruler of Pist, and I know who you are. All the world's a game, and you're a pest. No, player, and all the players merely pest. As long as you're here, take the tour. No, take the tour, but don't steal anything. Yes, that's it. Okay, so do you recognize the voice? I don't recognize the voice. I, I know the game. Yeah, the game is pissed which is a parody of the game Myst. Basically, after Myst became a huge worldwide success, uh, this company called Parity Interactive, that's like a parrot instead of parody. Oh, <laughs> very good. I uh, see what they did. Very good. Uh, they made a... a <laughs> they took the word parrot and put Y the end. And this is where it's not actually a terrible idea. Basically, you visit the island of Myst, which is now called Pissed, for legally distinct reasons. Uh, but you've gone there after 4 million players have been through it. So the place has kind of been trashed. <laughs> um, and so, but it's not that much of a game, really. You still navigate around the island in screen by screen fashion, as you did with Mist. But um, it's just sort of like a collection of things to click on in each screen with little jokes attached. Now, that voice there, which you did not recognize, James and Ben, is John Goodman. Oh, really? Who played the King of Piss, King Mattress, or whatever? And popped up several times during the um, dur- during the game, and even recorded the pissed theme song, which I'll play a little bit of now. Oh, goody! I'm sitting here in my living room, and I just can't seem to shake the glue. I'm pissed. Man, I- and tell you what. I'm going to violate copyright this episode. And at the end of the episode, I'm just going to play that entire song for you, audience. Yeah, put it all there, man. It needs to be heard. I don't think the makers of Pissed are coming after me. <laughs> um, it's funny because we were talking about sort of how awful these games were sometimes. And this game was awful and the humor was stupid. But it was the kind of thing that people picked up and just had a little, little laugh with. You know, you'd throw it on like a magazine CD or something. It was kind of cool. And they actually went on and made a few different parody games. And they are even going to make a sequel to Pissed called Driven. <laughs> Which really, does, it doesn't even come off as a joke. It's like, no. okay, driven, driven. It's like what I was saying before with the Mad Magazine. It's just like, just change a letter and it's a joke. Uh, they did an X-Files one. That's uh, called the X-Fools. 
Uh, oh, yeah, they did Star Wars, clever. which was Star Wars and everything. And oh, that's right, the best one. Microsoft Windows 98. Oh, was that them? <laughs> that is parody interrupted that Microsoft Windows. Now, what was that? Did you? I didn't know what that was. I think it's just like, again, it's just like an experience of things. So they sort of theme a thing around screens from Windows and you click on stuff. I don't really think it's much of anything, but I remember seeing it advertised. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing I kind of, like, this is the, the game that inspired the entire list. It's like, it's just, re- oh, that's right. Apparently you could launch games inside Microsoft. It just loaded up. You could see there's like a Doom parody and stuff like that. <laughs> It's just very strange. And I kind of wish there was just this really in-your-face dumb parody going on these days. It doesn't really seem to happen. No, it's kind of fallen Alan, out of favor a bit. People yeah. have to be clever now, but they don't realize you can get away with dumb jokes. Yeah. And it's cool. We still appreciate them. Yeah. I, I love watching people fall down. It's great. <laughs> Sometimes they get hit in the balls. Oh, <laughs> lordy. Boing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that brings us to the end. Okay, honorable mentions. Have you got any for me, James? Yeah, I got some. Uh, House of the Dead Overkill. That was a yes, great yes, that was on, awesome. uh, on Grindhouse. Uh, Retro City Rampage did a good yep. job going up the game culture. Uh, also, Blood Dragon. Oh, yes. Another, very yeah, good. yeah. Blood, yeah. Blood Dragon was a really, uh, you know, really good kind of take on, on kind of 80s, 90s culture uh, and cool shooting with cyber dinosaurs and all kinds of stuff. And also pissed as well, but I think it's, I was going to mention pissed, but I haven't actually played it, so I didn't have too much to comment on. So I'm glad there's, you did, buddy. There's not there's not a lot to play. <laughs> <laughs> you get the song at the end, and you pretty much got all you need out of that game. Oh, pretty much. That was like it just as a it's it's a cultural icon. It needs to be known, if not actually played. Hey, uh, Ben, any extras from you? No, just that I had the um, Bullet Storm game, but cool. James got it. Uh, others from me that we haven't mentioned are DLC Quest, which is an excellent game where you can't do anything without purchasing uh, the DLC in game. That includes the ability to jump or move left or <laughs> uh, to buy items or anything. You've got to purchase the DLC first. Uh, very fun. Uh, well, I suppose more satire on DLC culture. Progress Quest, the best RPG ever made, which that's, is just. That's the, like the MMO for Paul. It is. It's Progress Quest. You just push start and you let it run as a process. And that's how you get better at the game. Skrillex Quest, which is just Zelda, but with Skrillex. Fantastic. Uh, Paradeus, which is Gradius, uh, made by the same company, uh, but a parody of their own game. Just stupid, stupid things. Like what? Because we were looking at it before the show. What? What? Um. What was some of? The, there's like the pirate. There's a pirate cat ship that you've got to take out. Uh, you can be an octopus in it. There was like one of the bosses was two girls sitting on rockets or something. Yeah. It, Fantastic. It went all over the place. It's just random shit. There. And one that I found during my thing, bored of the rings. <laughs> it's, it's boring. <laughs> it's just basically a text adventure. Yeah. It's like brilliant. That is the new, new fast. It's actually just, it's actually just Tolkien's bored writing. The rings. They just, Very good. Oh. they just read through the description of everything, Star. including his doorknob. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yep. I yeah. can hear you. Okay, uh, if the audience could hear anything during that time, if the guys are asking where I was, it's because I accidentally hit the mute button and couldn't find my mute button to unmute myself. Oh, no, no, no nice. my, my speakers oh, yeah. button. So I couldn't hear anyone. Ever so professional. There. I'm very cool. In fact, I'm going to leave that error in uh, <laughs> as, as a parody of, um, of great podcasts. I don't know if it's a parody. It's just sort of a <laughs> general <laughs> performance. It's just a thing that happens. <laughs> it's, just, it's just how we roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so next week is James's choice. So James, yep. what are we doing next week? Uh, we're going to go for the top five open world games. Excellent. Just reminds me how much I hate open world games. <laughs> this one's for you, buddy. Excellent. Oh, there's still plenty I like. There's heaps hey, I like. Yeah, there's Whatever. lots of these things. There's lots yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Like Tetris. That's open world. It's great. The Tetris MMO. No. I'm I'm a level fourteen T block. Excellent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I think that brings us to the end. So thank you for listening, everyone. This has been Top 5 and a Half Bit. You can catch us on our website, 8andahalfbit.com, our Twitter and Facebook, and please like and share anything like that. If you follow us, you get our daily game watch. Subscribe to us on iTunes, and if you do, please leave us a review. Those reviews help share the love. Thank you for listening. I've been your host, Paul. And I've been James. And I've been Ben. Catch you later. Thanks, everyone. I'm sitting here in my living room, and I just can't seem to shake the glue. Yes. Man, I just can't change my ugly mood. Yes, I am one unhappy dude. I'm pissed. So unhappy. So unhappy. I could turn on my big TV, 
but no one up there looks like me. Makes me pissed. I change the channel, switch the switch, get the same old stupid pin. Switch the channel. I'm pissed. Change the channel. A bunch of oily superstars trying to sell me shoes and cars. Whoa, I'm pissed. That's bad news. Maybe my ill mood would improve if I put my gym shoes through the tube. Like they say, just do it. I could go bowling, but I lost my ball. I could hunt pigeons, but I got them all. I might go fishing with the other guys, but the only thing that's biting is the skeeters and the flies. I really hate the place I work. The boss is such a total jerk. He gets me pissed. I'm changing tires, pumping gas. The job I got ain't got no class. Uh -huh. yeah. Got no class. But every day I punch a clock, and still I'm up to here in high man. So I'm pissed. Pissed. And he's pissed. From nine to five, I bust my butt, work like a slave, and all for what? I'm truly pissed. Must be some way I can change my luck. That's my aliens in my pickup truck. Uh, hey now, Elvis, talk to my JFK. Come back to Earth and do the talk shows every day. Yeah, yeah. Now hold on. Things may not be as bad as they appear. Maybe it's my attitude around being too negative, bumming myself out. After all, I do have 86 channels of TV, real which way. I have a roof over my head that only leaks when it rains. I kept the athlete's body, but I still got athlete's foot. And I got a girlfriend who appreciates me for what I am. Yeah. Hey. I feel so good. I'm on. Take me a little nap. Hey, your highness. Get your robot off that lazy boy and get in here and clean these crawfish before they but baby, this is supposed to be my castle. All I get is pain and hassle. I'm so I'm castle in his castle. You, baby, you may be the king, but I'm the queen. So dig this thing. Now, woman, don't get on my case. I don't need no one in my face. I'm pissed, and I got a right. Yeah, and I got a left. So wake up and smell the coffee, John. Disneyland, so so long, Mickey! This TV's been nothing but trouble. Let me help you there. Oh, this is one. Yeah, girl, well, let's go outside to the kitchen and clean some crawfish. <laughs>